hundred hours Pakistan standard time assalamu alaikum this is radio Pakistan the news read by Daman Zaman the headlines the Prime Minister says objective of tax reforms is to make the tax code simple and plug the existing loopholes in the system Prime Minister Imran Khan will seek a vote of confidence in the National Assembly tomorrow. The Information Minister says the Pakistan Tariq and South government wants transparency in the elections to strengthen democracy in the country. Pakistan has been elected as the chairman of the Committee on Trade and Development of the World Trade Organization for the current year. In the Indian illegally occupied Jammu and Kashmir, the Hurriyat Forum has strongly condemned the Indian government's authoritarian action of again placing Mirwais Umar Farooq under house arrest. The Saudi-led coalition downed six drones today fired by the Houthi rebels towards the Saudi Arabian city of Khamis Mushet. And now the news in detail. Prime Minister Imran Khan has directed that tax regime be reformed and structured in such a way that facilitate businesses and help the economy to grow. Chairing a meeting regarding tax reforms in Islamabad today, he said the objective of tax reforms is to make the tax code simple and plug the existing loopholes in the system. The Prime Minister said tax reforms are aimed at reducing the discretionary powers of tax collectors and tax practitioners, besides introducing automation to ensure transparency of the tax system. The Prime Minister directed to specially focus on the issue of flying invoices. He also directed to ensure that no additional burden is put on the masses. Talking to prominent political figure Munir Ahmad Khan in Islamabad today who announced to join the Pakistan Tariq and Saf, the Prime Minister said no compromise or leniency will be shown towards elimination of corruption from the country. He said loot and plunder of previous regimes is responsible for the problems faced by the country today, including inflation and unemployment. On the occasion, Munir Ahmad Khan expressed complete trust in the leadership of Prime Minister Imran Khan. The President, Dr. Arif Alvi, has summoned the National Assembly to meet tomorrow at quarter past 12 in the afternoon. According to National Assembly Secretariat, Prime Minister Imran Khan will seek a vote of confidence in the National Assembly. The Minister for Information and Broadcasting, Sayyid Shibli Faraz, says Prime Minister Imran Khan and his party want transparency in the elections to strengthen democracy in the country. He was addressing a news conference in Islamabad this afternoon, along with the Minister for Science and Technology, Chaudhry Fawad Hussain, and Pakistan Tariq and South leader, Ali Zafar. Speaking on the occasion, Chaudhry Fawad Hussain said Prime Minister Imran Khan and his entire party fully respect all the state institutions, including the Election Commission of Pakistan. He said it is the joint responsibility of the government and the Election Commission of Pakistan to evolve a mechanism to ensure transparency in the polling process. The minister said transparency in the elections is the pillar of Pakistan Tariq and Saf's policy. The Election Commission of Pakistan says it discharges its responsibilities as per the Constitution and the law and takes decisions independently without any pressure so that democracy flourishes amongst the people. Responding to the statements given after the results of the Senate elections, the Commission, in a statement today, said the Election Commission is a constitutional and an independent institution. It said the Commission's responsibility is not enacting laws, but to protect them. It said if anyone has any objection to the Election Commission's decisions, he can take the legal course. The statement said the Election Commission of Pakistan will continue performing its duties in the best possible manner for the supremacy of the law and the Constitution. This is Radio Pakistan.
Pakistan has been elected as the chairman of the Committee on Trade and Development of the World Trade Organization for the current year. This was confirmed by the advisor on commerce, Abdul Razak Daud, in a tweet today. He said under Pakistan's leadership, the Committee on Trade and Development would strive to work for expansion of trade and investment opportunities for the developing countries. The Minister for Maritime Affairs, Sayyid Ali Hadar Zaidi, says work is in progress for the establishment of five port terminals in the country. Addressing a ceremony at the Lahore Chambers of Commerce and Industry in Lahore today, he said the government, under the leadership of Prime Minister Imran Khan, is striving to ensure ease of doing business. The Minister said maritime and shipping activities have reduced due to COVID-19. A three-day international tourism festival kicked off in Islamabad today. Inaugurating the event, the Minister for Information and Broadcasting, Shibli Faraz, said the tourism sector is being promoted under the vision of Prime Minister Imran Khan to create new job opportunities in the country. The three-day event is being organised by the private sector in which the government is extending all necessary facilities to make the event a complete success. In the Indian illegally occupied Jammu and Kashmir, several people were injured due to use of brute force by the Indian police against peaceful protesters in Srinagar today. The youth staged forceful pro-freedom and anti-India demonstrations outside the historic Jamia Masjid in Srinagar after Friday prayers. The protesters raised high-pitched slogans, We want freedom, Jeeve Jeeve Pakistan, and Pakistan Zindabad. They were also holding pictures of the Hurriyat Forum chairman, Mirwais Omar Farooq, who has been placed under house arrest once again. The Hurriyat Forum, in a statement, and Sirinagar strongly condemned the Indian government's authoritarian action of placing of the Mirwais under house arrest again. Meanwhile, senior Hurriyat leader Professor Abdul Ghani Bhatt, addressing a meeting in Badgam today, stressed on the need to start a sustained dialogue process and resolve all disputes, particularly the Kashmir issue. He hailed Pakistan for its support to the people of Kashmir and particularly praised Prime Minister Imran Khan for raising the Kashmir dispute across the world. In India, the main opposition party Congress has launched an online campaign titled Speak Up Against Price Rise Against the Modi Regime. The Congress, from its official Twitter handle, urged the people to participate in the online campaign by speaking out against price hike. Meanwhile, in a tweet, Congress leader Rahul Gandhi said the Modi government is pushing people in the swamp of price rise just to earn taxes. Another Congress leader, Shashi Thrahur, said every step taken by the Modi government has emptied the pockets of the common citizens to fill its coffers. Meanwhile, Minister for Local Government, Tourism and Culture of Indian Punjab, Navjot Singh Sindhu, has said the new controversial agricultural laws imposed by the Modi regime will lead to auctioning of land in the Indian Punjab and leave its residents as slaves. Talking to the media, he said the new farm laws are unconstitutional and illegal. Referring to the ongoing farmers' protest against the agriculture laws, he said the peasantry has never lost a battle. The Saudi-led coalition downed six drones today, fired by the Houthi rebels towards the Saudi Arabian city of Khamis Mushet. The coalition said in a statement that the drones were intercepted and destroyed near the Yemen border. Meanwhile, the United States and the United Nations have renewed their peace efforts as fighting has also intensified in Yemen's gas-rich Marib region. In Myanmar, protests against the military coup are continuing as hundreds of people took to the streets again in different towns and cities across the country today. On the other hand, another protester was shot dead in Yangon today in a crackdown by the military authorities, taking the tally to more than 50 people. And finally, the weather. Partly cloudy weather is expected in most upper parts of the country during the next 12 hours. However, rain, wind, thunderstorm is expected at a few places in Khyber Pakhtunkhwa, Kashmir, Gilgit, Baltistan, Islamabad and Potohar region during evening and night hours. And that is the end of this news bulletin. For more news and analyses, log on to our website, radio.gov.pk. And you can also watch the live video streaming of our bulletins on the link, facebook.com forward slash Radio Pakistan News Official.